What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are doing another underwater video for you. Today we are talking jig fishing. Got some underwater clips that will help you understand what's going on the next time you get bit on a jig and it's a swing and a miss. I've been doing a lot of jig fishing in the last few weeks and uh, Matt and I were talking about just the different species, spotted bass, smallmouth, largemouth, how they all uh, interact and bite the baits differently. So today we're gonna go subsurface, got some underwater footage for you guys to check out. And I want you guys to kind of put yourself in this scenario, put yourself out on the lake, pond, wherever it may be, throwing this jig. I got four or five clips for you right now. I'm gonna play them in real speed and I'm gonna play them in super slow-mo. And I want you guys, like I said, put yourself in that situation, watch these clips, and then after we'll have a little discussion, kind of some tips and some tricks to help you guys get more of those fish. But watch these clips and think about when you would actually feel the bite and set the hook. How cool is some of that footage? You know, watching the underwater footage, you can always learn new things. And those of you guys that have been following for a long time know that we've done uh, bite placement videos, we've done how to shake your worms underwater, are you shaking them too much, not enough. But uh, hopefully you guys found yourself in those situations on the lake, put yourself in that situation and, and uh, saw what those fish were doing. It's so crazy what goes on underwater. What's even more cool is how accurate those fish are to get a lot of those baits right behind the hook or if it's a cross style bait, right on the pincher. So um, yeah, as you can see, some of those fish didn't even get the whole bait in their mouth. They literally just grabbed the pinchers and shook or grabbed the, the harmful area of that crawdad. That's what that jig is trying to mimic and just tried to kill it before actually eating it. So uh, real quick, thanks for all you guys that came out to the East Tennessee Fishing Show this last weekend. Had a great time meeting a ton of you guys, shaking hands, telling fish stories. Uh, so really, really appreciate that. And then quick update on Matt and his family. Everybody's doing great. Baby's doing great. Mom and dad are doing great. So uh, really, really excited for uh, the Allen family. So back to the underwater footage. So I threw some largemouth in there and some smallmouth. Now, through the years, really 
analyzing this footage, fish in different fisheries, um, learn two things. <laughs> we'll learn a lot more things than two, but two things about jig fishing in the winter time. Uh, typically you get one of two bites. You either get the no bite at all, where it just feels like it's just mush. You're, you're dragging that jig or you're hopping that jig. And then all of a sudden it just feels like you're in grass or it's just a little heavy, not really anything going on. That's that fish just sucking up that bait and moving on. Or it's that, that fish just grabbing the pinchers and swimming off. Or when they slap it really hard and then you reel down and swing and a miss and you come back with your pinchers gone or nothing at all, totally depends on the type of fish you're fishing for. Smallmouth are no notorious for cracking that bait, hitting it spots too, hitting it as hard as, I mean, bam, just hitting it hard. You reel down, you swing into nothing. They are trying to kill that bait before they actually pick it up. And I think it's because they have smaller mouths. Uh, you know, they're just aggressive fish. They, uh, they like to hurt things, like to kill things and then pick it up. Whereas a large mouth, you get that mush bite, that's because that, that big old mouth has just sucked that jig in and just slowly swimming off. So you're lifting up and you're like, huh, something feels different. You, you reel down and set and they're there. A lot of times with the small mouth, spotted bass as well, you reel down and swing and they're gone. So this time of the year, I'm typically throwing some kind of jig whether it be a, that's actually a three quarter ounce football jig, or that's another jig, got my, my pockets full for you guys. Some kind of hula grub. No weed guard on that guy. One more for you. Or a hula grub with a weed guard. That's actually that uh, tungsten, that's that swagger tungsten football. That's three quarter ounce. Look at the size difference between that and a traditional lead head. Look at the size difference. When you've, if you've held a, a crawdad or a crayfish, like that this jig is trying to mimic, they're not very heavy. So, <clears throat> first tip for you. Let's talk largemouth, and I'm gonna overlay some, some, some clips here for you. Let's talk largemouth fishing, because going back, I was analyzing some of my, my, uh, my fish catches, my swings and misses recently, um, on, on two different bites, that mush style bite, and that real hard, no doubt about it bite, and then swing and a missing, so, um, cool. So let's talk largemouth, and then we'll go smallmouth and spots. We'll kind of combine them. So largemouth that mush bite. Um, the best tip that I can give you, and then Matt and I were talking about this just the other day. Uh, you know, when you're dragging, I'm gonna step back so you guys can see this. When you're dragging, I'll throw this out here a little bit farther. Try not to get hung up in the rocks. You're just lift, slowly lifting that rod tip. Right here, I'm almost, at, I'm like at 11 o'clock. You know, there's, there's straight up and down. There's 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. If I'm dragging and it feels mushy right now, if I drop my rod tip and then swing, more than half the time, I swing into nothing. You know, large mouth will hold onto it longer because they got that bigger mouth. Um, when I do that with a small mouth, a lot of times they're not there. So even if I'm, say I'm at four or five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, and it gets mushy, I'm gonna hit them straight up. I'm not gonna get, I don't wanna send this jig flying right at me, but I'm gonna hit them even up at this angle because I'm gonna get uh, a better hook in them than I would if I gave that pause, dropped it, and they felt that three quarter ounce jig in their mouth, they're gonna a lot of times spit it out. So if, if, I get, if I get bit, you know, that real hard slap or that mush bite, I'm gonna try and still lean back into them, reel down, and then hit them again. 
I'm gonna try and get that initial hook set right off the bat because, uh, like I said, this time of the year, you're down there soaking that bait, working it slow. They're just gonna suck it up, and you know they they know what's going on. They know that that's not a real crawdad, and a lot of times they'll spit it out faster than you can react and set the hook. Like I said, talk about Matt. You know, he says how he explained it was he's setting the hook before his brain even registers that it's a bite. You know, it's just a reaction thing. So so pay attention to that especially spots and small mouth. They got that smaller mouth, right? So uh, they're mean. A lot of times when you, when you get that mush bite with the small mouth, they have just the pinchers. So what I will do, I feel that mush. I will reel that, I'll keep tension on it, make sure they haven't dropped it. And then it's kind of tricky because you'll feel that, you'll feel that tick, a real subtle tick, two things. One, either that's their them sucking it in and that's their lips closing on the line or their crushers, crushing that bait, or it's them spitting the bait. So it's almost like a 50-50, but uh, same thing. So feel that tension, don't give them that slack, and then hit them. Hopefully that gives them that, that little bit of a delay on the small mouth and, and spotted bass will give them that time to get that bait all the way in their mouth. Now major deal you're dragging this thing along dunk don't just swing on the dunk you know if it's a large mouth you can you know it totally depends on the fishery if you're fishing in a fishery that has all three species in it you know best of luck to you but if you're primarily fishing a large mouth fishing uh, fishery hit them hard if you're fishing primarily a small mouth fishery give them some time because they what they did they just went up and just cracked that jig just killed that jig that crawdad, and now they're gonna come around and suck it up. So, dunk, I'm gonna slowly lift. I don't feel anything, I'm gonna shake it. A lot of times I'll come back and crack it again. And this time, slowly lift, if there is resistance, I feel like that, that, um, that wet rag feeling, that grass rag, or that grass heaviness feeling, that's when I'm gonna, I'm not gonna drop again, right? I've already taught you that. Don't drop, reel down, keeping that tension, and then and then set. So if you do start feeling that tension, like I said, with that rod at that like 10 or 11 o'clock, still give it to them. You don't have to drop. Put yourself in this situation. Wintertime jig fishing is so much fun. Again, you're dragging that thing. You're literally, don't, don't, I mean, you're paying attention. You're counting the things that you're hitting, right? Uh, pay attention to what you're fishing. You know, mud bottom, clay bottom, chunk rock, hard, big rock. Uh, a lot of time those, uh, you know, we've talked about it in many, many videos, but those fish are all about the rock. Again, so much to learn from underwater footage. You know, going back, watching some of my fish catches uh, earlier this last couple weeks, um, it's just that mush bite and then dunk, dropping that rod tip, making that mistake and swinging into nothing. But uh, watching the underwater footage, watching how those fish interact with that crawdad, um, how that jig uh, is really, really eye-opening. So hopefully the next time you guys are out fishing, throwing a jig in the winter time, you guys are watching these videos in your head and like, you know, walking yourself through what you're actually feeling, what's actually going on down there. Because again, so much is going on and hopefully you guys have learned uh, how cool bass are and how, how accurate they can be with their bites. Their bite placements right behind the hooks, right at the pinchers you know, just super, super accurate. But uh, really cool underwater footage. Love sharing that stuff with you guys. Again, great meeting all of you guys this weekend. Um, just a, a good week for fishing. But you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. But again, take these tips, play those videos in your mind. Next time you're out on the water, wintertime jig fishing, and I think you guys will be more on it as far as hook sets and you guys will put more fish in the boat hopefully this video helped if it did hit that like button subscribe to the channel we'll talk to you soon guys have a good one